The Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> of Johnson's Wax Products for Home and Industry present Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The script is by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie. Music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. It shines as it dries. It shines brighter than it's ever shown before. Actually, nearly twice as bright. Just think what that means to you and to your home. To you, it means a fast, easy way of waxing your linoleum and varnished floors. With Johnson's Glow Coat, there's no rubbing or buffing. You merely apply and let dry. To your home, it means added beauty, a rich, warm, glowing coat of tough wax that will protect floor surfaces and make them stay beautifully new years longer. Your cleaning chores will stop being chores because dust, dirt, and spilled things vanish with a wipe of a damp mop or cloth. Yes, that glow coat beauty is just as easy to keep clean as it is to apply. Once you've seen that shining, glowing, gleaming, protective coat, you'll realize just how lovely your home can be. Be easy on yourself. Be easy on your floors. Use Johnson's self-polishing glow coat and really bring out the beauty of your home. Look on the bright side, shine up the right side, bring out the beauty of the home. Mr. McGee of 79 Wistful Vista has had a lot of million-dollar ideas in his time. Some of them were not so good, of course, but others were simply horrible. (laughs) But he's got one now that looks like a winner. In fact, it's terrific. It's sensational. It's colossal. It's, well, it's Fibber McGee and Molly. When this idea hits me in the middle of the night last night, I leaps out of bed, half asleep as I was, runs over to the dresser, grabs a piece of paper, and writes it all down. Well, now, that was very intelligent of you, dear. You betcha. Did you find the piece of paper this morning? Yeah, but it didn't have anything wrote on it. What do you mean? I was so sleepy, I'd used a nail file to write with. <laughs> but this time, I remembered, and that's why I got this package right here, kiddo. This is the greatest little invention since Eli Whitney started making gin out of cotton. <laughs> Eli Whitney did not make gin out of cotton, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. He just invented a machine to take the seeds out of them. Well, they can leave the seeds in it for all I care. (laughs) I prefer root beer anyway. (laughs) Let me tell you about this idea, kiddo. Well, sir, I goes down to the war surplus store. Oh, no, not another 16-man life (laughs) raft. That was a bargain, all right, but this is better. Look, what would you say if we had a radio in the car? We have got a radio in the car. Mm -hmm. The kind that goes dead when you drive under a viaduct alongside a streetcar near a power line or past a policeman with a magnetic personality. You didn't leave me finish. Oh, I'm sorry. What would you say if we had a car radio that we could just lift out and carry away and use as a portable radio? Or just stick it back in the dashboard of the car again? Why, that sounds wonderful. Whose idea is that? Mine. <laughs> Well, then tell me over again. There must be something wrong with it. No, sir. This is it, kiddo. This is the gimmick that's going to put us in a big paid-for house on the sunny side of Easy Street. Here, look. There. There. What's that ugly-looking thing? That, my dear, is an army surplus radio. Six tubes. I'm going to rewire the car so I can just stick this radio in and use it as a car radio, or yank it out, switch over to battery, and use it as a portable. You are looking, Mrs. McGee, at the original McGee Cartable Radio. Cartable, get it? Combination of car and portable? Dearie, I take back everything I ever said about you and your inventions. Or I'd like to if it wouldn't take so long. (laughs) Forget it, Snooky. In every generation, there's one outstanding genius that's had to endure the jeers of the high (laughs) poli. Ah, but you're looking at a guy that's going to collect right off the bat. I'll have every car owner in the country screaming for a McGee Carnival radio. You will? Boy, I can just see the Ford people tugging at my coat sleeves, waving $1,000 bills at me. You can? But do you think I'm going to grab the first $20 million offer they throw at me? You better. You said it. <laughs> well, what do you do now? Well, first, uh, I see if I can work this army radio. Now, let me see. wonder how you turn it on. Well, I never was much for electronics, Pet. But just as a suggestion, how about that little switch there that says on? Hmm. Well, that's worth a try, at least. 
<laughs> and now, madam, with the very finger that will soon be digging bank presidents in the ribs, I turn on the first McGee Carnival radio. That's what a it. moment in history. Yeah. Better make it two moments. Nothing is happening. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Listen. Ah, WBD. WBD. Calling car 15. For the 14th and over. A man creating a disturbance. That is all. There. Isn't that wonderful? Every squad car in town will want one of these radios. Hmm. I got a TL for you, Snooky. Every squad car in town has got one of them. Oh, well, I'll tune in some other station and see what I can get. Uh oh, not a word about this to anybody now, Tootsie. Okay, Chief, I'll keep it under my hairnet. Come in. Hello there, Mr. Wimple. Oh, hi, Wimp. Hello, folks. Hmm. <laughs> oh, for goodness sakes, what a cute little radio, Mr. McGee. Yeah. <laughs> does it work? Oh, it certainly does, Mr. Wimple. All you have to do is join the police force, get assigned to a squad car. Easy, Molly, now I'll remember. Wimp, old man, I ain't dribbling this down Main Street yet, see, but... You happen to be looking at the portable radio that's going to revolutionize the industry. You don't tell me. Hmm. I'll say I don't, not till I get it perfected. All I can say is this is a car radio that is also a portable radio. Use it in the car or lift it out and take it with you. He won't tell you any more than that, though, Mr. Wimple, for fear you might catch on to the idea. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't be in the market for one anyway, I'm afraid. I've already got practically the same thing. What? You have? Yes, the loudspeaker in my car usually gets right out and walks along with me, still talking. <laughs> oh, you mean... Yes. <laughs> Sweetie face, my big old wife. How are you two lovebirds getting along these days, Cy? Si? Oh, everything is just going along peachy, Mr. McGee. In fact, Sweetie Face hasn't said an unkind word to me since Christmas Day. Out of town, is she? No, she caught the mumps. Well, that's pretty tough, Wimp. The mumps is something I wouldn't even wish on Sweetie Face. You wouldn't? No. Well, it wasn't exactly what I wished for either, but it's better than nothing. I guess. <laughs> but I've got to get downtown, folks. I'm getting Sweetie Face a little sickbed present. Oh, how thoughtful. What are you going to get, Mr. Wimple? Oh, isn't very much, really. <laughs> I'm just going to get her a quarter of the sourest, puckeriest pickles I can find. Heavenly days, isn't that awful? Pickles for the mumps. Why, she'll leap up and jam them all down Mr. Wimple's own throat. Well, that'll be a neat switch. A pickle in wimp. I got no time for other people's troubles right now. I got to get busy and make us a few million bucks. Oh, wouldn't it be wonderful if you did make a lot of money, dearie? I wonder if a mink coat is very warm. If you get cold in a mink coat, kiddo, we'll buy you two mink coats. <laughs> now, let me see here. This switch here turns it on. There. There's a mink coat in the wind at the barn town that I just love. Yeah. The most beautiful mink coat I ever saw. WBPD. WBPD. Calling car 15. Go to 14th and Oak. A man creating a disturbance. That is all. Hmm. Seems to get only one station. Can you leave it turned off long enough for me to call my dressmaker, dearie? Sure. What do you got to call her about? A new lining in my old cloth coat. <laughs> yeah. Billy Mills in the orchestra and pass that peace pipe.
I put this here wire there, and that there wire here, then this here wire hooks onto that there wire, which puts this here wire there and that there wire here. There. That ought to do it. Well, how are you getting along, dearie? Just got about it rewired, Molly. Now, wait just a sec. Aha. Now, listen to this. There. WVPD. WVPD. Calling R15. Go to the corner of 14th and Oak. A man creating a disturbance. That is all. Red thing. That surplus store give me a bum set. That's what they give me a bum. Well, now, if they sold you a set that can only get policemen, they should have come right out flat-footed and said so. Don't worry, kiddo. I'll get it. I'll get it. Don't you worry. Just got to go by this diagram. That's all. Simple as ABC. If NBC will pardon the reference. <laughs> and if they give me Hail Columbia, I'll give it right back to them, which will make it mutual. <laughs> I'll have this thing fixed before... Come in. Oh, it's Mr. Williams, the weatherman, McGee. Come right in, Mr. Williams. Thank you, Mrs. McGee. Hello, McGee. Hi. Ah, rewiring a radio, I see. May I help? You know how to wire a radio, Foggy? Yes, yes, I do. Mm -hmm. In fact, when I was in college, I built a wireless set with which I could get the British Broadcasting Company any time I liked. Wow. Heavenly days. You got Britain? Where did you go to college, Mr. Williams? Oxford. <laughs> I knew you had a streak of British in you, Foggy. I knew it just the other day. Remember when I was sorting a bunch of clothes we were sending to the church? Uh, yes. Uh, how did you know he was British from that, McGee? Maybe you didn't notice, kiddo, but I said something about the church will be glad to get this stuff, and the minute I says Churchill, Foggy leaps up and salutes. <laughs> hey, incidentally, they really have some bad fogs over there, don't they, Foggy? Oh, they do indeed. Yes, I was walking through Piccadilly one night. Walking and... through it? You mean that stuff they sprinkle on a hot dog you were walking through? <laughs> oh, my God. No, no, dearie. He said Piccadilly, not Piccadilly. Piccadilly is a district in London. Oh, oh, yeah, Piccadilly. Yes. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> anyway, I was walking through Piccadilly one night with some relish, I might add. <laughs> and a sudden fog came up. In ten minutes, it was so thick that Big Ben did not sound nine o'clock until almost 10.30. <laughs> the, the sound could not penetrate the fog until it cleared slightly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, what's the forecast for Wistful Vista, Foggy? You heard anything? Yes, yes. I just got word this morning that we may expect a cold wave here in July. In July, Mr. Wow. Williams, a cold wave? Yes. Yes, Mrs. Williams has a sister in the Navy. She's coming home from Alaska in July. According to her letter, she's the coldest wave that ever wore a white cap. <laughs> well, good day, probably. <laughs> Back to work, McGee. Every minute you waste is a hunk of 20 million bucks. I gotta adjust this condenser. What in the world is a condenser, McGee? Well, you see, when a radio shoots an electrical impulse or a wave out through the chloroform... Ether. Yes, ether, a wave, or an impulse. <laughs> it goes out into the form of a long wave or a superheterodyne, see? Oh. So when it hits the receiving set, it passes through a condenser which squeezes it into a short wave. <laughs> Thus, the grid leak, which... Hello, Molly. Hi, pal. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Hi, Junior. Glad you came in, boy. You were a little late. <laughs> you see this little radio? Can't come in till the door opens. <laughs> <laughs> you see this little radio? Yes, I see the little radio. Well, he's got a great invention, Mr. Wilcox. He really has. Yeah. A great invention is a pretty mild term for this radio, kiddo. This will be the greatest step forward in the automotive industry since a girl's knees were made safe by putting the gear shift on the steering wheel. Well, what is it, pal? What is it? Well, go on and tell him, dearie. I'm kind of excited about this myself, Mr. Wilcox. Well, here's the gimmick, Omaha. It's a car radio, you see, uh -huh. but removable. You yank it out of the car, turn it on the dry cell batteries, and zingo, you got a portable radio you can take any place. Hmm. The McGee Cartable Radio. You slap it back into the car, lock it in place, and you got a car radio. And if there's some programs you want to miss, leave it at home and you got an extra glove compartment. <laughs> Pal, it's wonderful. Thank you. I think so. Well, I can just picture the day when I'm riding along with my car radio on. I hear a well-modulated voice say, Ladies, do you have spots before your eyes? 
Spots that the children have tracked in on your kitchen floor. Oh, oh but McGee, it means... Then I park my car, yank the radio out, and the voice continues as I carry it toward my office. Do you suffer from worn and faded linoleum? Uh, look, Junior, that ain't what I was... Try glow coat. I can hear the voice saying, Johnson's self-polishing yeah. glow coat. What other kind is there? Yes, the voice will be saying as I carry my McGee cartable radio into my office. Uh, look, Johnson's self-polishing glow coat will banish <laughs> that scuffed and seedy look from your faithful old linoleum and help to restore its pristine light. And yeah, but what that kind no of... rubbing, no buffing. <laughs> Pour a little out, spread it around in 20 minutes or less. Look, You've got... look, waxy. Yes, Carnival. Uh, I mean, pal. <laughs> I'm going to make a million dollars on this thing, Christine. How'd you like to be my private secretary? Quick, Junior, yes or no? I got to have men around me who can make decisions. Okay, no. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Wilcox, what an opportunity you have passed up. I'll say. Yeah. Look, pal. When you've been in business as long as SCJNC, Inc., of Racine Wiss, ask me again. As the airmail pilot said when his motor conked out over Mount Whitney at 3 a.m., no more fly-by-night stuff for me. Sorry, chum. So long, Molly. Oh, he thinks this is fly-by-night stuff, does he? Hand me that pair of pliers, Molly. By George, if Fritz Chrysler don't order one of these for every one of his 1949 models, I'll uh, be... dearie. Hmm? Fritz Chrysler is a violinist. Yeah. Well, if he plays along with me, he can have his own orchestra. <laughs> now, let me see. <coughs> ah, there I got it, just like the diagram says. Turn it on, kiddo. All right. And yeah. don't think I don't appreciate the honor, McGee. Oh, there it is. WVPD, WVPD, uh, calling car 15. Go to 14th and Oak. A man creating a disturbance. That is all. Ah, now. Hand me that diagram again. I can't. It's printed on the radio. Oh, my gosh, it is, isn't it? Well, then what have I been using for a diagram? Well, I don't know, unless... What's that paper under your elbow? That, that's a sample of the wallpaper I was going to get for the... <coughs> Say... That does look kind of like a radio diagram at that, don't it? <laughs> oh, well, as I always said, one setback don't make a rocking chair. <laughs> now then, where's my screwdriver? Come in. Oh, hello, Mr. Old Timer. Hello there, kid. Hi, Old Timer. If I hook the amplifier tube to the power rod, put in the... What you doing this time, Johnny? Breaking up what? <laughs> He's rebuilding a radio, Mr. Old Timer. Yeah, I'm practically inventing a new radio, Old Timer. McGee's Cartable Radio, combination car and portable. Is that so, Johnny? Yep. I love radios. I remember when I was just a young fella, my mama said she'd like to have a crystal set for her birthday. So I bought her one. A crystal set? Yep, necklace and four earrings. <laughs> four earrings? Mama had awful big ears. We made quite a celebration out of Mama's birthday that year, though. Papa said he was going right downtown and get her a big surprise. I love surprises. Yes, sir. And sure enough, in a couple of hours, her surprise come, addressed to Mama with a big tag on it. Took four men to carry it in the house. What was it? Papa. <laughs> oh. Of course, I've watched radio grow up, kids. When I was a youngster, radio hadn't even been invented yet. Yeah, when you were a youngster, they hadn't even invented people. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty good, Johnny. But uh, that ain't the way I heard it. No. <laughs> the way I heard it, a uh, farmer says to his wife, Say, he says, you were talking in your sleep last night about Wallace starting a third party. No, I wasn't, says the farmer's wife. I just heard the chickens raising a ruckus, so I riz up and says, Well, I wonder what's got into our Henry. Well, so long, kids. <laughs> The King's Man and I'm a coming a courtin' Cora Bell. I'm a coming a courtin' Cora Bell. Got a 40 clover stuck in my lapel. With a horseshoe in my pocket and a rabbit's foot as well. I'm a coming a courtin' Cora Bell. Gotta keep up my courage, Cora Bell. Gotta speak up to your pappy for a spell. My intention of a honeymoon hotel I'm a common, a cotton corobell So it's giddy-up, giddy-up, Sylvester Don't you dare to stop Cause underneath this double-breaster Beats a heart that's about to pop I'm a craving, caressing corobell I'm a-counting on some 
and kiss him in the dell. Let it thunder, let it lighten, let the rain come down pell-mell. I'm a-coming, a-courtin' Corabelle. I'm a-coming, courtin' Corabelle. Corabelle. Get up, silly. Got a four-leaf clover and a horseshoe in my pocket and a wishbone as well, cause I gotta be lucky when I come a-courtin' Corabelle. So it's giddy-up. Hi-ho, Sylvester. Giddy-up. Don't stop, cause underneath this double breast there is a heart that's going to flip-flop, clippity-clop, flip-flop, flippity-flop, hippity-hop, hippity-hop, about to pop. I'm caraving, caressing a corabelle. Caress me, corabelle. You know you got me counting on a lot of kissing in the dell. Over yonder in the dell. Let it thunder. And let it lightning, let it rain. Tell me, I'm a coming courting, regardless of the weather. Do tell me I can be a steady fella, won't you? She's too fat for me. She's too fat. She's too... How's the radio coming along now, McGee? Got it rewired yet? I was just about to try it out, kiddo. Listen to this now. Oh. WVPD. WVPD. Calling car. Uh, no. That ain't quite it yet. But I got an even greater idea than I had originally. Doesn't seem possible. It is, though. Look, I can already get shortwave on this thing on account of all police calls are on shortwave. I thought police calls were all on a crime wave. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's just newspaper talk. <laughs> now then, it's a simple matter if we get local shortwave to get foreign shortwave. Catch on to it? So, when I get this baby finished, we'll have a portable car radio that'll get any broadcast in the world. Overseas, even. Heavenly days. Yeah. Now then, let me see this diagram again. As soon as I fix the frequency... How did you break that? <laughs> break what? The frequency. I didn't break it. Well, you must have. Huh? It was fixed when you got it. No. <laughs> see what it says down the corner here? It says... Model B fixed frequency receiver. Yeah, but... Uh, so if it was fixed when you got it, you must have... No, done... no, no, no. Let me explain, kid. All right. A fixed frequency set means a set that the set frequency is fixed, you see. Some of the fixed frequency sets are set so the frequency is frequently fixed for a freak frequency. <laughs> or, in other words, if the freak frequency is too frequent, then the frequency you fix has to be fixed for an infrequent frequency, which is fixed. <laughs> Yeah. Now tell me about television. <laughs> well, television is an entirely different frequency. You see? Come in. Hmm. Oh, it's Dr. Gamble, McGee. Hello, Doctor. Hello, my dear. Hello, Dipper Mouth. Hi, Pullman. Pullman, dear? Yeah, he's the guy people are always calling up for birth reservations. <laughs> You will excuse me, Button Beezer, if I fail to explode with mirth. Hmm. That is a very weary bit of whimsy as far as I'm concerned. But why are you taking your radio apart? A peanut tube is not edible, you know. Don't try to tell me anything about radios, you lumpy old acidity bag. <laughs> I was wiring up 20-tube super hats when you were still trying to pick up your own pulse beat on your cheap graduation stethoscope. <laughs> Oh, he really has a wonderful invention for radio, Doctor. Tell him about it, McGee. Yeah. I'm sure the doctor can keep a secret. Well, if I can't, I'm in the wrong business, my dear. I've heard more confidential whispers in my time than a speakeasy peephole. <laughs> well, briefly, Doctor, I'm about to go into the manufacturing business. McGee's Cartable Radio. Combination of car and portable. Radio for your car, then you can unhook, lift it out, and carry it around with you. You know, it hurts me to say this, Buster, but for once, I think you have a sensible idea. You betcha. Yes, you better drop in and see me tomorrow. This is not normal. <laughs> not only is it a combination car and portable radio, my fat friend, but the McGee Cartable will be able to get foreign broadcasts from overseas. Just as soon as I make a few more adjustments here, now. Pliers? Pliers. Screwdriver? Screwdriver. Tire tape? Can't find it. Don't need it. <laughs> well, I'll see. Aha! Well, yeah. you think you found the trouble, dearie? Yeah. <laughs> you see, Doctor, he had a little difficulty with it before. All he could get was the Wistful Vista Police broadcast. Oh, well, see if you can get Romania, McGee. I want to see why King Michael quit. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you that, Fatso. They twisted his army. <laughs> well, she's all hooked up, kids. Now, wait till you see what I get this time. <coughs> ah, that's different. Prefecture de Paris! Prefecture de Paris! Ici, donnez-moi 
56 lit cans. My gosh, did you hear that? We got Spain. That was Spanish. <laughs> that was French, stupid, huh? and keep quiet. I studied medicine at the Sorbonne in Paris. And alert, I... alert. Ici, donnez-moi bicyclet cans au coin de la rue de la Paix et de la rue du Chien. Il y a un homme qui fait du scandale. C'est tout. Fini. Was it really Paris, Doc? Was it really Paris? What did he say, Doctor? What did yes, he say? Yes, yes, it was Paris, well, all right. What did he say? And as near as I can translate it, he said, Paris police calling bicycle 15, yeah. go to the corner of Rue de la Paix and Oak. A man is creating a disturbance. <laughs> That is all. That is enough. That is too much. If you heard someone say, my floors haven't been washed in 17 years, you'd be surprised only if you didn't know about Johnson's liquid cleaning and polishing wax. Bright gleaming floors without tiresome scrubbing is the standard result if you use Johnson's Liquid Wax. You see, Johnson's Liquid Wax is more than just a wax. It contains an effective dry cleaning ingredient which quickly removes dirt and leaves floors immaculately clean and thoroughly waxed. You merely apply, then buff lightly. No water, no brush, no hands and knees scrubbing. This simple cleaning method leaves your floors glowing and gleaming. After the first application, all you need do is touch up the heavy traffic spots whenever necessary. Your floors will stay perfectly beautiful longer. They'll never be exposed to water that cracks and warps wood flooring. Forget tiresome, messy scrubbing. Remember Johnson's Liquid Wax to bring out the beauty of your home. Look on the bright side, shine up the right side, bring out the beauty of the home. Ladies and gentlemen, the United States Marines have announced the formation of a post-war reserve force, the Citizen Marine Corps. These hometown Marines will remain civilians and work at their civilian jobs. But in their spare time, they'll wear Marine uniforms and learn to handle Marine equipment. Men who enroll will be given Marine training at regular weekly meetings and at two weeks of summer camp each year, and all of this on salary. So if you're between the ages of 17 and 32, contact your nearest Marine Corps office or write to Division of Reserve, Marine Corps, Washington, D.C. Good night. Good night, all. The makers of Johnson's Wax Products, Racine, Wisconsin, bring you Fibber McGee and Molly every Tuesday night. Be with us again next week, won't you? Good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.